Hello, greetings, programmers. Welcome to Rad Studio 11.3 Alexandra, a Q&A roundtable. Um, this is Jim McKeith. We always do a Q&A when we do our launch webinar, but it's always so popular and we always run out of time. We're like, you know what? Let's just do another just Q&A session. So welcome. Joining us today is Marco Cantu, David Millington, Product Management, uh, myself and Kyle Wheeler, our general manager. So we'll be here to answer your questions and uh, just discuss anything you might want to know about 11.3. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Marco real quick just to discuss some of the basics of 11.3 if you didn't hear about the launch already. Actually, I'll hop in here, Jim. This is Kyle. Um, okay. Thanks everyone for, for attending. Um, uh, as you'll see through, and if you join the previous webinar on the launch, um, 11.3 is uh, is feature packed, um, and um, and yeah, a lot of improvements across the board. Um, big quality focus though uh, for us, uh, as you'll see, and we've already started getting some really good feedback from that. Um, so thank you for your attention uh, here today. Um, we do, like I said, feel like this is a really solid release, um, one of the best of the 11. Dot series. Uh, and with that, we are trying to get that in more hands of, of new uh, Delphi and C++ um, users. And so we've got some pretty interesting and uh, exciting uh, um, promo promotions going on. Um, you see on the screen here, we've got the three for one on maintenance uh, for customers that um, maybe have been off maintenance for a long time, uh, looking for a reason to come back. This is a good opportunity to get in, uh, stake your claim on this release, and then what's coming in the next uh, next several years. So. Uh, I'm, I feel pretty confident that we'll have a big uptake from, uh, from customers coming in on this one. We also have the 28th uh, uh, anniversary of Delphi um, going on with some exciting promos there up to, I think, 28% off, uh, as the name states, on uh, on the latest version so of Architect. Um, so take a look at our website to see those. But as we uh, move forward here, I'll turn it over to Marco to, to give us a little bit more of the overview of 11.3. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. I put the link in for the RAD offer page, by the way. So if you're in the, if you look in the chat window, you should see that. Um, thanks, um, Marco. Here, um, the, we have already had like a long webinar discovering, uh, discussing 11.3 features and quality improvements. So this is the two minutes version of the same, uh, one hour long. Um, so if, I mean, if you want. To get more details, the replay is available on YouTube. Just, just, uh, just look at that. Uh, the summary of 11.3 is that we have uh, newer versions of the existing target platforms, uh, specifically iOS 16. Although the current support, the current full support is only for the Delphi compiler. Uh, Android 13, uh, macOS Ventura, Ubuntu 22, among the Linux distributions, and Windows Server. 2022. These are versions where the 11.2 was already working fine, um, but we are now officially supporting them, and we made some tweaks and and changes uh, specifically for for some of these versions. The there is a small new feature for mobile development, which is a biometric authentication component that allows you to do fingerprint or face ID authentication. Um, we have further expanded the um, Delphi debuggers uh, towards uh, LLDB. Uh, now all of the non-Windows platforms use the LLDB debug engine. And uh, we have um, new features in the IDE, most prominently the highlighting of matching words and a new tools API for the code editor. Uh, and finally, the last additional feature is that the control list component in VCL offers uh, multiple selection. Um, I don't know if there are further comments on this, David, you want to, to add? No, I, I think that's a great summary. Thanks, Marco. Um, I think I'd mostly add that although there are some small features in 11.3, uh, we really emphasize uh, the quality focus in 11.3. This is something I said in the webinar, was that we don't have many new features in 11.3 simply because all our time has been spent focusing on quality um you know really really you know, indicates the the balance of time and the the focus we have this this release yeah next slide please is next slide is the quality slide um 
yeah, as David mentioned, and, and we mentioned in the webinar, it's really quality focused, not just in the number of bikes to be fixed, but in the overall attention. And specifically, we did a lot of work around uh, Delphi LSP quality, uh, which wasn't at the level we wanted in, in 11.2. And so we really spent an extra, extra focus there. But we did improve uh, all of the subsystems, the compilers, the linkers, debuggers, RTL, visual libraries, both VCL and FireMonkey, RAD server, data snap. So we, we made improvements for, for each of the areas and we fixed a lot of bugs reported by customers on Quality Portal. Um, if you go to Quality Portal, I know there's another slide later about that, um, these are actually reflected, so you can actually browse for yourself through through the system and see the the list of the bugs that have been fixed. Um, now the bugs addressed overall are higher than than those 468 because some bugs were duplicates, some were uh, we couldn't reproduce anymore because of other fixes and change. Uh, some no longer applies, and a few we decided we we won't fix that that as designed as expected or or similar things. So I think the overall number of bugs of issues addressed is is uh, six hundred something. Um, so uh, it, on that respect, uh, again, it's a good release, but it's a good release because we got feedback from beta testers and also now from some of the uh, customers who started using it that they are they are happy with the release. Um, and that's the summary of the release. So if you want to get some more details on this or see the full list of uh, reported bugs or whatever, if you go to Marco's blog post announcing 11.3 Alexandria, and you can use that QR code on the screen there if you'd like uh, to get there. I'll also put the link in the chat here shortly too. So go there, check that out. It links to everything else and has a lot more details for everything. And with that, we're going to go to Q&A. So we've pulled a couple of questions that uh, we want to make sure were discussed from the last one. But then after that, it's going to all just be questions that you're typing in now. And I see there's a nice list coming in already. So if you do have questions, just use the question panel, which you can get to from the little uh, bubble there on the right-hand side. Type your question in there, and I'll put them up on the screen. We had planned to all be on webinars this morning. We Everybody combed our hair and everything. but some reason it's not working <laughs> uh so just use your imaginations and imagine us being here excited to talk to you which you'll be able to hear us so that is going to work out first question which we uh frequently get is where do i download 11.3 and get my license key and that is on the my.marketero site which is the new customer portal. So if you haven't been out there yet, that's where you go to get it. If you don't have it yet, 11.3 uh, yet, you can download the trial or uh, buy a new license from www.embarcadero.com. Do check Rad Offer though, if you are buying as there's some great deals going on right now. So Marco, can you install 11.3 on alongside other versions of Delphi? Um, yeah, you can as long as they're not they're not 11 or they are on a different VM or different computer. Um, all of the versions that are part of the same series, um, 11x in this case, uh, they are all they all use all use the same packages. They are all binary compatible, but that also means they cannot coexist on the same uh, on the same virtual or physical uh, machine. If you have 10.4, if you have uh, 10.2, if you have Delphi 7, they will be fine uh, alongside on the same on the same computer. Um, if you want to keep your 11.2 and have 11.3, I mean we can sort of recommend a VM. You'll need to register your your um, license on the new machine or VM. But um, if if you run out of them, just ping support. And you'll get you'll get a bomb, so not not a big deal. I mean, our product can be legally used on on by the same person on multiple um, in in multiple versions, so you're you're covered there. Um, and and just to clarify, in the past there was this this double digits series, so there was ten for one, ten for two, ten for three. Uh, now we move to a 
a numbering scheme where the first number is the main release and determines the compatibility slash, I mean, incompatibility. I mean, you can have two on the same machine, but they're all compatible. So BPLs, third-party components, and so forth remain compatible uh, across all 11 versions. The day we'll have a release that is not compatible because it will be um, based on, on, on compiler change and issue change and so forth, uh, that will not be called 11. Okay. Uh, do I need updated third-party components when upgrading from 11X Alexandria? Which I guess kind of is the same answer. <laughs> it is compatible. Yeah, yeah, because it's a minor a minor update, it is compatible. So you can keep your components now. Depending on, the, I know there is a specific slides on on how you do how you 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 do the upgrade at best. But in short, if you have references to third party components in your registry and you keep those, that you will see and recognize uh, those packages. Same for C plus builder. Same for Rust Studio. Yeah, so I, this is based off a blog post I did on um, Git it packages. So I always recommend, first of all, you should have a backup, a, a, a good system backup. If not, do that first. Uh, and then I also like to use the settings migration tool to backup the, your settings specifically, just to give you that extra level of um, comfort or fl flexibility. And then if you use the Git it command line tool, you can get a list of all your packages. Uh, uninstall those packages, then perform your upgrade, and then reinstall those Git packages. And then after that, it should work. Just everything should work fine. And so I, that's what I, I do, and it works good, and I don't get any errors. And then it saves me from having to go through and reinstall those packages. So anyway, uh, you can get the blog post there on our website. It has goes into more detail on that. That's the quick, quick version. So I already see there's a couple of questions in the chat here referring to certain uh, issue numbers and what's the status of this issue, et cetera. So all of Quality Portal has been updated now with the status in 11.3. So if you go to quality.marketero.com, uh, as Marco said, there's a lot of them that were, were fixed or addressed. So it's easier to look at that up than for us to try to um, remember. I mean, Marco and, and David are brilliant, but I don't think they remember all of the uh, the bugs off the top of their head. <laughs> and and likewise, if, uh, I mean, we're happy to discuss, discuss things here too, but if there is an issue that you want to make she addressed in a future version, that is the place to go because that's where, uh, where they get the uh, inspiration from. All right, so this is a question we get a lot. Um, Will there be a Delphi and C++ Builder Community Edition for 11 Alexandria? The, the answer to that question is that this is um, currently being evaluated and discussed internally. We want to have um, a, uh, an update to the Delphi Community Edition and C++ Builder Community Edition. And we are planning to have this for 11 Alexandria. There is nothing we can announce in terms of a time frame for uh, a new community edition. Okay, uh, let's see. What's going on with C++ Builder? That's another persistent question. And David, I know you have a blog post coming on that. Yeah, yeah, we do. So there are some really good things coming. Um, and I'd, I'd love to talk about what they are today, but. Yeah, we, we have a blog planned probably fairly so I mean, I want to hand wave but in a week or something, maybe um, sharing the work that's, that's currently underway, um, you know, plan a bunch of screenshots even and stuff just to just demonstrate our, our in progress work. Um, really looking forward to sharing that. Um, I understand that many people have questions and I, I know you sort of want an answer now in this webinar, but I, I would ask you to please wait for the actual announcement when we when we talk about what, what we're working on. Um, so it's a kind of non-answer, but uh, there is some some really good stuff that I'm I'm really looking forward to being able to share with everyone, and that will that info will, will come soon. Okay, and actually, I, I know some of the details, and I'm excited about it too. <laughs> Are there any C++ code completion fixes, David? 
Sure. So most of the work that we did for code completion was in 11.1.5. Um, not everyone actually realizes, but we had a special C++ focused uh, version between 11.1 and, and 11.2. 11.1.5, which had a, a big focus on co-completion and, and a few other C++ related issues. And that was rolled into 11.2. So if you have 11.2 or 11.3 installed, then you have that, that work. Um, overall though, uh, Visual Assist is our, our path forward here. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, I, I have a blog post coming about uh, a couple of things. Um, which are coming in C++, same as the previous slide, really, really good stuff. Um, I guess the slide is a bit of a hint about one part of the content of that, um, but, but there's more. Um, but yeah, can't really comment on that currently. But uh, yeah, we've, we've had on the roadmap, um, back when we published Roadmap Social Assist, and that's, that's our path forward. Okay. This is an interesting suggestion that came in of a long-term support version of Delphi. Marco, I know we actually kind of discussed that a little bit earlier, if you want to share some thoughts on that. Um, yeah, I mean, we currently don't have any plan in this direction, but um, we, are, we are getting requests from customers for the ability to, to stay on a specific version longer than the 18 months, two years, uh, cycle plus the time it takes you for to, to move on to a new release. And so I have one version that remains available for a longer amount of time. Um, reality is that is something we made an attempt in the past, providing fixes for, for older releases. Um, it was not terribly successful. Um, so that was, that was shelved. Um, I would, be very interested in listening on on specific scenarios and reasons for this. Um, I know some from some customers, but more information and more details would be very welcome. So if you um, if that's something that you'd like to have, um, please send myself or or David or Kyle or or any of us an email explaining what's your your specific um, reason for this. Um, and uh, and we'll have an internal discussion and see if we can make another attempt to 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 offer some some longer term uh, active support. Okay, so I'm trying to put the next question in here, and I don't have. Let me just click here. All right, sorry, uh, I was behind. The Tools API, what does the new Tools API do? And what is the best way to edit text in the editor with the Tools API? David. Well, so this is actually one of the things I was most excited about in 11.3. I guess it kind of counts as a new feature, um, but we actually added it for quality reason because many plugins that work in the, uh, the Delphi and C Builder code editor, um, and it's very popular to do so, uh, have to hack things in the IDE to get access to the editor, and that, that leads to stability problems. Um, and so we, we really wanted to provide an official, you know, blessed uh, way to do this. Um, and we have a really powerful API. It's, it's extremely powerful. So it lets you query about all the editors that are visible and what their files are. Um, uh, you can get information about the lines that are on screen, about which lines are collapsed and expanded, you know, elided, we call it, when, when ranges are expanded and collapsed. Um, you can find what is on screen, at what location and where. You can uh, reserve some space in the gutter if you want to sort of add, you know, how in the editor gutter currently we have, um, you know, highlighting for changes or we have bookmarks or line numbers or, you know, a whole heap of uh, markup. If you want to add something yourself that is similar markup, you can just reserve space in the gutter and, and have, have your own owned area there. In the code editor text portion itself, um, as well as the entire code editor, including the gutter and, and everything, um, we have multiple methods for changing the painting where you can you know, intercept the painting and just change something about it, you know, augment what's painted on screen or even completely replace uh, what is painted. Um, I've probably forgotten some stuff, but it's a really powerful API. 
um, our goal there basically is that everything we have seen plugins do in the code editor and more, we have an official way to do both querying the information that you need in order to 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 know what to do in your plugin and um, and of course implementing it. Um, and in the 11th period webinar, we had a few questions as well that were related, such as about editing text in the editor. Look, there are a couple of different APIs um, to do that. There's some sort of high level read and write APIs. Um, but one that not many people know about is some um, one called IOTA Edit Position, uh, which sort of lets you edit the way the editor does. You know, it sort of mimics putting a cursor somewhere and you know, reading text and writing text and so forth. Um, so uh, yeah, that's a, a common question and uh, an API to, to get into. Um, we plan a, a lot of documentation about the tools API where we're converting a lot of, of things to it. Um, I was looking up this particular interface today and um, although our documentation mentions it, it doesn't have much information about it. Um, and luckily with Google, there are some code examples. So um, yeah, the combination of what's already in the tools API and, and the new editor API is very powerful. Um, you should be able to do just about anything you can think of. I also want to emphasize, by the way, it's such a good API that we moved some of our editor features over to use it. So um, Error Insight, for example, which shows you know, the red squiggly underlines under errors or, or warnings or hints, um, and the new feature about highlighting matching words, uh, both of those use the new API as well. Um, and I think that's always a good sign for an API when, when it's something that, that you yourself use uh, internally. You know, it's not just something made available. Um, you know, it shows it's really good for its, its purpose. It also recommend. I mean, it, it shows the a degree of usability and polish, I suppose. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. It's a good sign. And we did a, uh, with the beta testers, which includes tech partners and MVPs, when we showed this feature to them, a lot of them were like, oh, I've got ideas. Oh, I'm updating this. Or So yeah, this is very exciting and then getting a lot of uh, good uptake right away, which is always a, a good view. On the, on the note of polish, I mean, this is actually version two of the API. So I, I wrote a couple of plugins, you know, Bookmarks and Navigator, which are in Getters, and you know, I, I think many of you use because they're in the, in the top downloads. Um, and uh, you know, I, I basically wrote an API when I did those. It was the API I, as a plugin author, wanted to have. Um, and uh, we've we've taken that API, and the now excellent ID engineers have extended and improved that. It's it's a version two of you know everything that you know, once you have an API and you think, ah, oh, if I could just have another go at this to do it better, and that's that's what we have. That's that's what we've shipped. Um, not only a good one, but the the better version of it. Nice. So oh, this one, Kyle, will the three for one, someone's asking, will it be available in September when they need to renew their subscription? Or what should they do if they're like, oh, I'm in the middle of my subscription right now, but I really want to get this three for one deal? Yeah, I saw all the questions come through. Um, so the short answer is right now this is just planned for uh, a march only promo uh, along with the delphi um, anniversary promos that are ongoing um, we are looking at some uh, incentives to existing customers if you are in at your expiry date uh, close to it what have you um, reach out to your renewal rep or your partner manager to see if there are any ongoing um, you know, renewal promos for existing subscription holders, but the target of this this campaign is really about getting um, new users or uh, older customers that haven't been uh, been active in a while uh, to come back and see the power of 11.3. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's worth mentioning though that we do have um, a ongoing offer if you when you when your subscription is is due and you and you want to renew it rather than buy a single year you can buy multiple years that gives some discount and fixed price over time um so it might not be as good as an offer but it is still a good offer and um, um if you if you want to renew for more than one more than one year okay. and actually i guess the next question is the same question um yeah uh 
so the question here, we are in the middle of a migration to Delphi 11 and we have big, big problems with IP server and auto completion on our VCL projects, even 11.3. When do you expect to stabilize the new system? And is it possible to put the old system back in place in the meantime? Sure. So, um, yeah, in 11.3, we did a lot of work on LSP. So I'm sorry to see that um, even with 11.3, there are there are problems. Um, to answer in, in, in reverse, so when we first released Dolphy LSP, we had both Dolphy LSP and the old version running in parallel, or rather you could turn on the old one. Uh, but after a while, we, we disabled and, and removed the older one once, um, once Dolphy LSP was, was running fully. Um, in terms of stability, I mean, in 11.3, um, and I understand that this is not quite the answer for you because you're running into to problems, but the reports we have from many people are that 11.3 Adelphi LSP is the, the best it's been, um, best it's ever been. Um, and we, we put a vast amount of effort into quality here. Uh, so I hope that the majority of people will see that. But if, if you specifically run into problems, um, then the, the best thing to do is to file reports with log files. And I really want to emphasize the logs. We have documentation about how to turn log files on. A very extensive logging in Delphi LSP and um, you know, it's pretty much essential to include log files for us to, to resolve issues. Uh, but with log files, you know, 99% of the time we can fix something right from the log. Um, although sometimes, of course, for a particularly weird one, we might have to, to get in touch to ask for more info, but, but log files are, are the way. Um, now, they, uh, they can, the log files can include your source code. So when you file a QP report, if you are concerned about the contents, um, you can email us and we will uh, you know, attach that to our internal system rather than making it uh, public. Um, and I put the email address into the, to the reply of this comment. So um, yeah, I think that's that's the main answer. Um, in 11.3, we really hope it is enormously better for most people. And if you do still have issues, um, which is really regrettable, we obviously want to resolve those. Uh, please uh, send us send us logs. Yeah, I wanted to add that one one case, and I don't know if it is this case because we don't have enough info. But one case um, that is um, causing some trouble uh, in terms of uh, code completion is when in large projects, the compiler is struggling a bit in terms of in terms of performance and in terms of even the amount of, of data it has to track and keep around to, to compile the application because Delphi LSP is based on, on the compilation, well, a light compilation of the, um, uh, of the project source code. Um, I wanted to, have, to mention that because while we are focused on improving the compiler performance and we did a lot of improvements over the last couple of years, there are still areas that we know are causing extra um, trouble, let's put it, use that word, to, to the compiler or it puts stressing the compiler a bit more than they should. But we have identified some of this area. There was a blog post of mine around December, uh, I think December on blogs.embarcadeo.com. Should be relatively easy to find, uh, where I highlighted a few things that you might want to check um, because we know they are putting some stress to the compiler. For example, unit aliases. Uh, if you have a lot, the compiler would hate it. Um, same if you have specific structures in your in your in your um, with a very extensive number of of folders with a lot of files that that done great performance. And the other thing which is specifically troublesome is um, circular unit references. Uh, the circular unit references affect the compiler really badly. And we have seen customers who took a little bit of effort cleaning up their, their uses graph and they got compilation, I mean, really at a different level, like going from two minutes to 30 seconds. Same exact millions of lines of source code, cleaning up the, 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 the uses statement to avoid um, some, of the, some of the cycles that they had in their code. It really made a huge difference on the 
um, on on the compilation speed and on the LPLSP because because yeah the the, the two are are associated. Uh, so I, I wanted to took the, take advantage of the question to to mention that um, we we have a lot of things we want to do on the compiler, but because we know there are some workarounds that are not too difficult to apply on existing code, uh, we want to make sure people are aware of this uh, of this option. I just that we had I had a uh, webinar with Bill Meyer a few months back on updating legacy code, and he wrote a book on that. And in his book, he talks about reducing uh, circuit references and um, that specifically, and the build performance you can get, improvements you can get. And he worked on a large project, and he said it was huge, 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 huge. And so they actually something they monitor once they figured that out and he documents that in his book uh bill meyer or william meyer you could he uh said that they pay real close attention to that now and it's made a huge improvement on just their development process so another question here uh marco i installed get it kanopka signature vcl controls it brings several ui controls and designers one of the designers is ray stringless editor that has a limitation of max 100 or 1,024 characters per line. How can I keep the UI controls, but remove the editors that are installed by bonus KSVC? Well, that sounds like a bug <laughs> if it's uh, Yeah, it's more of a bug. And, and something I don't think I've seen it reported, but I, I need to double check as, I mean, it's hard to remember all of the items floating around. We It's actually interesting because we have been discussing moving some of the those editors into the core product, and of course, if if they have limitations, well, 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 make sure we need, we 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 overcome them. Now, in general terms, you can, I mean, you can override a, you can override an editor and replace it with with a small package. Um, it's not exactly an easy task, but it, it it should be possible to to bypass that that editor the other thing that i'm quite certain that the editor allows editing in the code editor i mean when you have the string list editor you can always hit i mean go to the code editor and use the code editor instead um i'm not sure if that overcomes the limitation but um but it might but other than that yeah if there isn't a bug in quality portal please report it and we'll uh, we'll uh, try to um assess and, and schedule uh, a fix. I saw that there's a tool to migrate from dbgo to FireDAC. Can you tell a little more about this tool and how it works, what's its limitations, etc.? I think that's the refine tool, right, Marco? Yes, that's a, that's a script for refine tool. So uh, what we have done over the years um, is uh, find I mean, try to help customers migrate from some of the old slash legacy the database engines. And, and DBGo is not strictly legacy, but it is old. Uh, I mean, BDE and DB Express are legacy at this point. Um, so the process that we have come up with is made of two different pieces. Um, so the first is... Um, um, relatively smart uh, search and replace tool based on regular expression. That's called, why it's called RE find because it's a regular expression based find and replace. Uh, it will be a very long name uh, tool, which is a command line tool. So it, it works on your source code files outside of, the, uh, outside of the IDE. So what we do, we provide specific scripts that would go into, for example, if you take the BD, it will take a T table and convert the, T table component in the source code and in the uh, DFM or FMX files from T table to TFD table, the FireDuck table. Um, that's one example. It will change your units, uses DB tables to uses the equivalent unit, uh, which I think is FireDuck data sets on, on FireDuck. So it will update your use statement, it will update the name of the component. When available, it will also change a property name to a similar but different property name. Uh, for example, at times the SQL is in a text property, at times is in a SQL property, and so it can also do this type of this type of mapping. 
Um, this type of conversions are not complete because there are differences between components. So we also provide units that are add-ons to, to uh, Fardac and basically add some of the missing properties slash behaviors to Fardac itself. So rather than using the Fardac classes, you use an extended version of Fardac classes that's specifically tuned to DB Express, ADO, or, or another technology. So again, we had two of these scripts, uh, BD and DB Express. We added one for, for DBGo. Uh, everything is in the samples folder for RAT Studio, and it has some documentation and the actual scripts. Of course, the recommendation is to iterate on the scripts. You might not, I mean, the scripts might not adapt perfectly to your source code style. So you might want to run them um look at the results, find, and you can also output the change in your source code files. Uh, that, that's a recent change. Um, and then what you might want to do is to uh, update the script to make it fit your, your coding style better. So it's generally not a one-shot project, it's more of an iterative project. You might need to go through a few attempts. Uh, and then we'll not convert 100%, but it will convert enough to really simplify the process. Okay. Oh gosh, I've lost my spot here. Uh, just just before we go on to the next one, Jim, and to give you uh -huh. thirty extra seconds um, on the subject of the uh, Kanok, uh, pardon me, Kanok controls and the the string list, um, Ray just wrote in to ask that uh, that you contact him about that. So if if you're having issues, please uh, please get in touch with him. Okay. And thanks, and Ray, good to see you online. Yeah. Uh, question: What about ARM compile or what about compiler for ARM Linux, like Raspberry Pi or other IoT ARM devices? If the question is for Delphi, as as I imagine, um, yeah. it's uh, something that we are we are evaluating. There are other plans um, for for I mean the other compiler enhancements that are in 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 the plans and in the works. Um, one other platform that is becoming a relatively relevant is ARM for Windows. Um, so we are trying to see what's going to be our next, next Delphi platform. Uh, but again, also comparing it to work that we want to do on the existing compilers, their, their architecture or the language and, and other areas. So trying to balance things, um, well, well, we don't have a decision at this point that we can discuss or communicate, but it is a platform that we are we are uh, interested in and we are evaluating as a target. All right, I have lost Marco. I'm not sure can if you can. If, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. All right. I lost you at some point there, so I'm not sure how much. Oh, sorry. Um, all right. Um, So the next question here, does native iOS development and deployment support the M1 and M2 Mac? So the Mac OS M1 and M2 based Macs will run iOS devices or iOS apps, I guess. The question is if you can deploy iOS apps to Mac OS, M1 and M2 Mac OS. Um, and this I've is not- it out and it works. It was, yeah, well, yeah. I, it, I mean, <laughs> there are two types of targets that you can reach with uh, with with our products. There are targets that we officially support, um, and, and those are those listed officially in our documentation and website and the platform support page and so forth. But we know there are many other scenarios that we expect application would work, but we don't officially support and maintain. Uh, 
the reason is that it, it's it's extra effort and i mean we have to pick <laughs> uh, to pick the options otherwise it will 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 be stretched thin with support and and qa and so forth um so we have added support for ios simulator on arm uh, mac devices uh, we don't officially support running the applications but um, we have seen multiple people um, doing it with success another example is the linux system for windows which works quite nice with uh, Delphi compiled Linux application, including FMX Linux ones, including UIs. It's not an officially supported target. It might become in the future. It's one of the things on the table, but we know that um, a lot of customers have been successful. Another I could mention is, is BlueStacks or similar for running Android apps on, on a PC. Um, Frymonkey application generally do, do fine there, but again, not, unofficially supported target. Oh gosh, I'm getting way too ahead of myself. All right. Is it possible to hook up, hook the pop-up menu that is associated with, to the T-Rich edit? So when you turn, or when you turn spell checking on, when we turn on spell checking, it overrides the pop-up menu that is currently associated. Oh, so the T, the pop-up menu is built into T Rich Edit. That's a good question. Yeah, but I think we made a change to. I don't know. I don't remember the exact details. Sorry. We made a change either in eleven two or eleven three, allowing for more flexibility in which pop-up menu is going to 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 pop up um because that when we initially released it it was it was more limited but i don't remember the exact details sorry yeah i remember something about that too but i yeah i don't remember the details and either. Th i mean this is 100 percent a microsoft component so we can certainly customize it but we don't have we don't have full control and full flexibility in terms of um w what you can do there i mean you can have your own menu or you can use the platform menu, but using half of the platform menu plus adding items, uh, it is possible. I mean, it's Windows API, everything is possible, but it's not it's not uh, on the trivial side of things. Same for an edit. I mean, for an edit box, if you right click uh, or, or a regular memo, you get the, the, the cut, copy and paste thing that's from Windows. If you add a pop-up, it's your pop-up, but you can magically merge uh, your items with the platform items. I mean, if you take over, you take over. You have to do everything. Now, with the spell checker, things are, are a bit more tricky because that's like an extra feature that surfaced there. So, um, yeah, I, I think we made it a little easier, but I, I, it is, it is not a trivial solution. Okay, next question. Uh, I'm still looking for a comprehensive book where I can, f where Android coding in Delphi will be explained from installation, first app, signing, uh, uploading to Play Store, uh, so on and so forth. It's an entire cycle for a commercial app targeting Delphi Android beginners. So I know that, oh gosh, William, uh, I can't remember his last name, has a pack book from Packet. That's like a Delphi, uh, recipes or something like that and then there's also a delphi cookbook i don't know if that goes through all the details there's a lot of it's in doc wiki though too uh, mark are you aware of any uh book on that topic um i i know books that partially cover the topic i don't know of a book that exactly like from zero to hero in, in android coding in delphi uh, we have, I mean, there is a tutorial in Rust Studio itself, it's, and the doc wiki, it's a bit hidden, but it's still there, that has some of these like step-by-step -step get, getting into things. Um, and, and yes, there are books of, of various nature, like the, the Andrea Magni book on, um, on Farm Monkey has a lot of this, but the angle is more, I mean, understand Farm Monkey than just 
So the angle is different. I, I think it's extremely valuable and it has most of this content, but but the angle is different than that what's suggested here. So so I just put a link into delphibooks.com, which is a website by um, Patrick, who I see is on here in the chat. He has a listing of all the Delphi books. Then I also put a link in for the Delphi cookbook, which Ian just sent me, which I think might be the one I'm referring to. I, I'm not sure if that's the one. You can go look at it and see. But if you go to Delphi-books.com, you can see a list of a fairly exhaustive list of Delphi books and see what's available there. But yeah, there's stuff in the doc wiki too. Oh, I already, we already did this one. Um, why after installation, the library paths are reset for Mac OS, Android, and iOS and not Win32? I have not seen that. Have you seen that, Marco? Yeah, I've seen that. Okay. Um, uh, it, I, I could, in theory, I mean, I think I have the knowledge to explain the technical nitty gritty details. It's, um, it's, it's honestly a, a, an issue. Um, it depends on the installation path and steps, so it's it's kind of a weird scenario. We know exactly why it's happening. Uh, we've tried, we've made a good attempt to try to address it in 11.3, but um, I mean we fixed that bug, but it was creating more issues than it was solving. So we we, we we're not we haven't shipped it. Um, it. <sighs> The issue relates to installation action sequence, and it's uh, it's honestly fairly complex. So we'll make another attempt uh, for for 12.0, but it is a known issue that some of the library path. I think in in C++ Builder, the 64-bit library path has has the same same trouble. Um, yeah, they're not maintained from the from from. Well, they're not installed correctly. It's not even true that they're not maintained. They're not configured correctly, even in terms of, of the default. Uh, I think if you do if you use if you use James' suggestion in terms of backing up the the the, the registry configuration and restoring it, um, it's going to work or it can at least manually restore like the individual items. It's an XML file at the end of the day you can you can browse through and find the tidbits, but it should be automated, of course, and it, it's not. Yeah, I was, I was going to say I, that's probably why I haven't seen it because I have that process I use. Which yeah, is but uh, it also depends because if you, like for example, if you install Windows platform only because hey, hey, that's what I want to try out first, then the migration will move everything over but then if you later install another platform the default for that platform is going to override what was in the registry so the process of maintaining the registry settings works of the first installation but if you omit a platform in the first installation and add it later then it's um yeah that that, that information is not maintained uh, i think um, i think that's one of the use case scenarios but there's more than one I see. Um, oops. Why after installation library path? Oh, that's what I just did. Is there updated REST OAuth 2 samples? Yes, that's a good question. Um, so the, there is an updated OAuth 2 sample. I think it is in the uh, among the demos, it's actually called REST, REST demo, or a similar name. Um, now, I need to double check if this was actually, I, I know I have an updated version, uh, but it came from a different source um, internally. I think the ver current version on, on um, uh, GitHub and in the product, if you install the demos, is the updated version, but I'll have to double check. It adds a number of things to uh, the OAuth. Um, it has um, expiration for for the connection. It has uh, several new features and improvements exposed. I mean, the improvements were done in the library itself. The demo helps seeing the, the, the change. Unfortunately, setting up OAuth 2 is not exactly 
like a one minute thing because you need to have a provider, you need to register your application, you need to go through a number of steps. Um, and so it is not exactly um, a, a, like a two minutes operation to, to get the demo up and running. Will you consider supporting, I guess, David, this, I think this is for you. Uh, will you consider supporting the direct use of MFC libraries and direct support for importing and compiling them? Well, MFC is not our library, so we can't redistribute it. You know, we, we can't ship it. Um, but in the sense that it's, you know, a C++ library, and as long as you have a copy, then, um, you know, it's the kind of thing we, we should be able to, um, uh, you know, to support compiling. Uh, so I, I, I think the best thing to do here would be that if you're trying to use it with C++ Builder to um, you know, file a QPR report if, if there are particular things that aren't working and, uh, and we can look into that, please. Uh, de question dedicated to Delphi compiler, which behaviors are different in the trial versions of Rad Studio and the regular license of Delphi? um that's not an easy question um the the main difference between the trial version and the regular version is the lack of a command line compilers in the trial version so the trial version does not ship with uh, with command line compilers so it can use directly or outside or from the ide um, using uh, i mean asking for external compilation um, but other than that the code that is compiled from the trial and the regular product should be uh, should be the same okay okay now currently using vcl styles isn't compatible with the Windows framework from Jam Software on GitHub. It just breaks the ribbon. Uh, is that something that we can fix or is that something that needs to be fixed in the Jam ribbon framework? Um, uh, that's a tough question to answer without having looked at the specifics. Um, I I have the impression that there might be some change to be done in the Reborn framework, but it is also a possibility that it exposes actual issues in 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 the style support. In which case, it it would be on us to 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 make fixes. Um, well, we we need a we need a specific um, uh, QP report, and uh, we can examine it and and try to understand. Okay. Uh, do you have instructions on how to integrate Rad Studio into a GitLab pipeline? I can probably answer that one. We we don't have a, a preset set of instructions there, um, but I think that'd be a great thing to add. Um, in general, we try to support you're a local build machine, so you can sort of have a, a, a build machine yourself. Um, a lot of the more modern pipelines end up with um, you know, various images like Docker or so forth, which are things we're looking into. And Marco, you might have more comments on, on that. Um, so I think the answer is we, we don't really have instructions yet, but it'd be a great thing to, uh, to be able to, to support. Yeah, yeah we, we are looking into solutions that would allow our customers to build Rust Studio applications um, not on on a on a local or own machine, but on a on a cloud hosted machine. Um, that nothing really we can announce today, but it's something we've been looking into, and also trying to partner with uh, external vendors that offer similar solutions. Um, I mostly use XC7 in evaluating an update. 
question is, is HTML5 Builder decommissioned? Is it still around? What's the status of HTML5 Builder? No, it's not available anymore. I mean, it's available in that old version, but there's been no update and it's not sold or bundled with Rust Studio anymore. Question or a suggestion, I'm looking for begin in pair jumping, I guess navigation between begin in pairs. I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, please, please file a QP feature request for, for that. I mean, we want to add this, you know, useful kind of things like that in the editor. Um, but um, the number of sort of add-ons and plugins like uh, G experts and C in pack, and I'm not quite certain, but they might already support that feature. So that's that's worth looking into. Okay, question: Who is best to talk to about FireDAC issues, specifically Sage and ODBC? Uh, I guess that's not a question. That's a question about a question. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you can email marco.can to edmarcadero.com and I can either follow up directly or find someone uh, more technical than me who can uh, provide the specific information. The other option would be support, but I'm, I'm fine to, to, to have a first look. Do you plan to change HTML editor syntax checker in Delphi? David, probably for you to answer. It is, uh, not really. Um, so we do have some HTML editing support uh, and that you can edit HTML in the code editor. Um, but to be honest, HTML is not really our core focus. I mean, our core focus are things like Delphi and C++. Um, so we don't really plan much or many changes there. Um, However, this is like if, if this is a particular interest for you, this is the kind of thing that we do support plugins for. I mean, um, both with syntax highlighting uh, and code completion, um, including asynchronous code completion. Um, you can write plugins using the tools API, and um, you know that might be an option if you know there are particular things that you want to to see uh, in the editor for for any language. Um, you know, that we that we don't provide in build. I wanted to mention because I don't know the background of that question, but we, I mean, we completely updated and and redid our HTML support in the IDE recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the 11 series, um, we used to host Internet Explorer um, as a viewer and editor. Uh, slash designer for for HTML. And uh, now we have a native BCL solution. Uh, Internet Explorer ActiveX is not used in in the IDE at all. Um, so there was a significant change in in, in that. Uh, also adding support for um, Markdown as part of that of that um, big uh, improvement in in the 11 series. Yeah, that's a good point in pointing out Markdown as well. Thanks, thanks, Marco. Yeah, um, but yeah, that 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 changed. So we we did we we removed Internet Explorer, which is excellent, um, and replaced it with a native VCL control from Delphi HTML components, actually, um, which is a, a great library. Um, but that's that view is 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 kind of a, a read-only view. You can't sort of edit the HTML in a a rich HTML format. You can still only edit in the code editor as as HTML code. And um, you know while we we like supporting HTML to to view, and you know it's nice to have it there in the editor as well. Um, yeah, it, it is sort of you know the the rich HTML is is kind of like a, a read only or, or preview version. Um, but Markdown is worth noting as well because Markdown is a very common format used for for readmes in many projects, um, you know, open source or or not. Um, and through the same component library, we uh, support that now. Uh, Within Delphi and SeaBuilder, um, you can you know just just open a Markdown file and both editors in the code editor and and see a formatted uh, rich preview the same as HTML. And you can even set it up so that uh, a particular file will automatically open when you open a project. You know if you want to distribute a project on GitHub, for example, there's a project configuration setting so that um, when someone downloads that, 
and open search you can uh, you can display the readme automatically so um yeah definitely a lot of things we're doing there but i i, I think the view is more that um you're within the code editor where we're focusing on you know, our, our main core things and we're adding things like markdown that are the sort of like the the more modern way to uh, to provide things like like readme's So I, I'm not sure I understand this question. Why am I having to add BDS host to my environment? I had to chase on the internet to find this as a solution to the compile error I was receiving. So I'm not sure if Mark or David was familiar with this. I, I'm not sure what the compile error was that. I don't know if there's enough information. The only thing I can I that might be from from is that if you have a project with um, Getty dependencies, um, you cannot retrieve the Getty packages unless you have BDS host configured at, at the command line level. And so you need to add BDS host support to be able to uh, do that step and 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 do the compilation. Um, there might be some other dependency in terms of paths and so forth that are that are needed when you compiling comma line or MS build that requires BDS host. Um, so I, I I imagine that's the that's the scenario. Okay. Um, are there plans to replace Beyond Compare Lite with Ultra Compare in the future? I don't think so. I love Beyond Compare. I hope not. <laughs> Ultra Compare is cool too, but I really like Beyond Compare. Um, nothing we can really announce or talk about here. I, I, I'm I like Beyond Compare personally. I'm also <laughs> I mean indirectly helping manage uh, Ultra Ultra Compare, but um, I mean, we might augment it, but I don't think we we are planning to replace it. So we might offer both options. That's conceivable, but but not really remove beyond compare. Um. So I I think no, wait, this isn't this is a new one. Okay, will the tools API be opened up a bit so we can add our own target? Oh wait, is this one I just asked? Yes, it is. All right, sorry. I think that was that was a new question there, Jim. I think. Oh, was it? Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, like the tools API, we are trying. I mean, it's very comprehensive already, but we are trying to extend and open up as as much as possible, as you saw in eleven three with the editor API. Um, this particular one about adding a, a a new personality, for example, is actually a remarkably difficult problem. So I'm sorry to say this one is probably not coming soon. But if we see enough interest in it, it's the kind of thing that we can we can look at further. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there are just one or two little areas that we can't quite support yet, and this happens to be a question about one of them, unfortunately, <laughs> rather than being able to talk about all the stuff it can do. Um, but uh, yeah, so the answer is probably not for this one, but um, we support as much as we can, and we'll continue supporting and expanding as much as we can in future. Is there an offline version of Git it packages so that Windows 7 developers can still install their favorite Git it packages since Windows 7 does not um, support TLS? Um, we haven't refreshed the local Git it packages for 11.3. That's something we plan doing because some of the packages uh, for example, uh, Konopka controls had some fixes after after 11.2 at some point. Um, you can still in download and install the the 11.2, um, um, bonus pack download. I don't remember the name, but that only includes the core uh, packages from Embarcadero. So the the uh, the three Parnassus plugins. The uh, two other uh, Konopka and uh, Radian shapes, um, Beacon fans, 
uh, what else? There might be something else there. So it's a limited set of um, of gated packages. Unfortunately, there isn't much we can do. I mean, we decided that we had to have all of the of the gated <laughs> link surface as HTTPS, um, and um, so Windows Seven. Uh, is 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 really tricky to use. Uh, if there are ways to patch it, uh, I know that some customers have been able to to get thing, things going, but that's really a, a Microsoft issue. But um, uh, that's one of the reasons we don't officially support Windows 7 as a, as a host, um, as a target for running Rust Studio. We support it as a target for the applications you build with Rust Studio, but not for running Rust Studio. To reply on this one, um, uh, there was a comment in the chat that Windows 7 does support TLS 1.1 and 1.2, but needs to be enabled in the registry. And I think there's a Windows update that you need to install as well. So there's a combination. I, I, I have done this on a Win 7 machine, but a couple of years ago, and my memory was back then, there was a, a download from Microsoft and a registry patch, both. So, so it is possible, it's just a bit tricky. Okay, uh, David, with the new auto highlight feature, can the highlight background color be changed as it's very subtle and not easy to see the highlight words? Uh, yes, there should be an editor setting for this. Um, oh yeah, I forget exactly where, but it's somewhere in the editor color settings. And then there's some um, one for like a, an, an additional, um, you know, additional highlight color or, or something. Sorry, I forget the exact name for it, which is, the wrong time to forget it, uh, but, but but it should be possible. Yes, um, I love the uh, IDE search functionality. What is it? Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Was it control period to get the search through all the settings and stuff? That's how I IDE find it. Right. IDE yeah. insight. Yes. Yeah. Can I compile Win32 VCL application that runs on Intel computers use with a Mac Mini M2? My idea is to compile for ARM and Intel using one. Mac Mini M2. If so, which virtualization engine should I use? So this isn't officially supported, I don't believe, but I have used it in parallels and have had good success with that. Um, I, I uh, yeah, I tested this all right after when it first came out and it all worked really well. It, and I believe the Windows is not, uh, Windows ARM in virtual machine is not officially supported yet, but I think Microsoft announced they're planning to make that officially supported with partnering with Parallels. So I believe that is the current status of that. Oh, and I just did that one. What version of the Android SDK is currently recommended for development and where can I find instructions for the best way to install, upgrade it? Um, so it's the version that's installed with it. When you install it and it gives you that option to install it, it will install and set it all up for you automatically. Uh, and then there's in DocWiki, if you go to the main DocWiki page, there's a platform statuses page that will tell you the version that it, or versions it targets. But I don't think that mentions the Android SDK version, does it, Marco? Uh, no, it's a separate thing. So today you want to and we support targeting um, API level 32, uh, but that's independent from the from the from the SDK. I don't think there's really a version of the SDK. I mean, the SDK it's just like a wrapper, and then you use it to uh, download and install APIs, features, simulators, um, tools, and, and so forth. Um, so you can use you can use the latest SDK or the one that comes uh, that 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 is installed via Ra Studio. It doesn't really come with Ra Studio. It actually requires downloading it from from Google. Uh, but we automate the process as much as we can. Uh, and then you want to use API level 32 because that's the requirement for the the Play Store right right now. Of course, if you're not deploying the Play Store, but doing direct deployment, then it's more up to you which um, which API level 
you want to use. Okay. This is about the brief editor model. Apparently it used to work in Delphi 5, but at some point now it's not working. Um, I'm not sure if that's, if there's a quality portal issue on that. Are you familiar with any issues around this, Marco? I can answer that one. Um, okay. There are some issues in quality portal and uh, yeah, I, I think if there are specific things um, that aren't already reported, then, then please add a report. Um, but yeah, we can, we can take a look at this. Yeah, I, I just want to, to to mention say that it looks like I mean five to ten is five versions. It's like twenty. <laughs> so um, no, no, I mean that's that that's not justification for breaking things, but it it happened over a fairly long period of time. Yeah. So Our number few... scheme has been weird over time. So sorry for that. It has been. I was thinking about like what is it? it the compiler version is twenty two, right? So no, thirty two something. Thirty two. Oh wow. Well, the uh, compiler version dates back to Turbo Pascal one, so that's uh, slightly different numbering in itself. Okay. On FireMonkey, I, there was a few questions around this. I believe. Do you plan to improve the way to integrate AAR libraries used in mobile computers that support scanners, uh, uh, RFID, etc.? Um, I know that we are doing a lot of work to improve our tool chain for Android and um, change the way you can use different libraries and things. I don't remember out of if that includes improvements to our libraries. I'm I know this is one of the items in in the to do list, but I don't remember what's the what's the currently target slash priority. Right. But the, the entire process for, for generating um, A, B packages and uh, uh, th that process is being completely overhauled. We were using some older tooling from the Android SDK. We're moving to the, the most current set and that should open up quite a few uh, options. Uh, again, I don't remember specifically about this one. Sorry. Okay, you can follow up over email if you want. I'll, I'll find some more information. So, um, Glenn Duffkey just commented that the Codex IDE plugin by Dave Nottage of Delphi Worlds it automates integration of AAR really well. So. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a very good point. Yeah, that, yeah Dave Nottage that, is doing some great great work in terms of exposing additional APIs through his uh, Castry library, I think yes, that's called. Uh, yep. And um, he's really he's really a astonishing resource for for the Delphi community. Yeah, yeah. I occasionally I'm... work with him as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, every time I open my 11.3 project, I get a dialogue saying has some dependencies that are not installed on this machine. Why am I getting that? It didn't receive it in 11.2. I'm guessing is that, would that be a get it thing that the get it package is missing, Marco? It sounds like, but that should happen when compiling more than saving. So I'm not certain if that if that's the case, but what? the project structure has optionally a uh, an indication of dependency on a Getty project. And if the Getty project for some reason doesn't exist, slash has been renamed in, in terms of the ID or is different, it cannot be found even if it does exist. Uh, the only real solution is to clean up the, the, the project file uh, in that case. Um, but I'm not sure this is the scenario. I'm, I'm slightly confused. So uh, uh, Ian Barker just messaged me that that you, it will appear sometimes it's in the project options. There's an option you can clean that up. It's a uh, probably a style or something you said that's missing. Um, oh, it so. could be a dependency on styles. Yes, that that's the other option. If you have a style embedded in your application, that style is not available uh, because it hasn't been installed or, or downloaded. Then that's uh, possibility but it's weird because if someone updated 
11 2 to 11 3 on the same machine i guess that should should stick well if the style was installed from get it then unless they followed the steps i had to make sure you reinstall oh yeah true thing, true in my, it in be my missing. yeah if, if it's an add-on style it it might need to be downloaded manually yeah yeah so that's probably what it is it's probably missing the style which is in project options you can find that are there any improvements around data snap i think i saw a few questions around data snap um if there were improvements and this is specifically saying since uh, well the I'm short excited. answer is not really i mean if you if improvements means new features added to data snap architecture uh, and the reason is that we have been focusing over the last few years to an alternative architecture that's called rod server um rod server has a much it has a modern rest architecture compared to data snap and it offers some advantages uh, it used to be price prohibitive uh, now it is um, not anymore you get free licenses free deployment licenses with with the, i mean that are different depending on the your version of, of raw studio but they, they are included and there's a light version that's co completely free to distribute um now what we don't have and we've been considering but it's fairly tricky is a migration path from data snap to to rat server um now having said this i i would not be ruling out completely the fact that we might add some core features um like to web broker that will also pop up in data snap but data snap is more on on in maintenance mode it is in active maintenance mode so it's not deprecated in any way we are addressing issues we are doing cleanup um i think a couple of was it in 11 or, or one of the 10 four releases we reintroduced the method mapping that had been dropped uh, in previous versions um so it is actively maintained but not to the point that it's um we are doing uh, specific improvements now if you have specific requests for improvements uh, feel free to log them or email us and it's, it's we can certainly consider we do have some large customers actively using data snap so um again it's not it's not that we're completely rolling out i mean if you tell me like db express or if you tell me about bd i'm going to tell you no we're not touching it period but data snap is on a different on a different level or, or different consideration okay um we're migrating to delphi 11 and we encountered the problems with high dpi support specifically in keyframes seems they're not aware of dpi changes how can we fix this in a simple way not sure if uh, you're familiar with that issue uh, I am. Uh, we resolved a whole bunch of issues with high DPI in frames in 11.3. So um, if you're upgrading to 11.3 and you're still running into issues, please uh, file a QPA report or even email me directly. Um, if you're migrating to, to an earlier version of 11, then I would recommend testing out 11.3 because we've specifically fixed a, a bunch of issues in this, this area. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm pretty sure I did some high DPI stuff with keyframes in 11.3, and it was looking really good. So, with the new functionalities of the new editor API, can I set the color of variables, constants, and classes? That is to say that the variables have red, the constants have white, for example, David. Uh, yes, and this is actually exactly the kind of thing we're hoping people will sort of delve into and write plugins to do, you know, this and, and all sorts of stuff. So the API you would get here is that, you know, like I said, this is a vast API, but the particular one is that there's a particular event um, for painting text, you know, code text in the code editor. Um, and, you know, that's called with a bunch of context and, you know, you know, uh, you know what color the editor wants to use and, and that kind of thing. And you can intercept that and just change the color that it will paint if you want. Um, so you know it will say hey i'm about to paint in you know blue and you can say no paint in red and um you know, it'll, it'll go ahead um you can also completely replace it and do its own painting if, if you want to 
Um, what you would have to do is, is keep track of which elements you want to paint differently yourself so that when the event is fired, you know, you know what, you know, whether to change it for this particular one or not. Um, the uh, uh, Paint API gives you the information that it has, um, and our syntax highlighting API doesn't you know, differentiate uh, you know, between variables and constants, for example. That, that info isn't available, so it isn't passed you. Um, but you can uh, track that kind of thing you know, yourself. Um, you, know, you might want to run your own parser. Um, and there are a couple of really good open source ones. There's one really well-known one. Um, golly, my memory is really bad today. Anyway, uh, if you keep track of, of, of what you want to draw differently, then yes, the new editor API will absolutely let you draw differently um, however you want, um, including in very different ways from, from this. Excellent. All sorts of fun things you could do there. I, that's actually a really good idea. I like that suggestion. Uh, could you supply a blog to explain how to share a Delphi library compiled code without sharing the source code? Oh, so the DCU. Or the BPL. Um, I have scoured the web and not found a good answer. I tried to using packages, but they affect the ability to debug. Your VCL library is able to do this. Can you build and link a project without the VCL source code compiling? Or you can, and then debug it without stepping into the VCL code. Debugging DCU is a lot of this. My library contains inherited forms, and I know that is an added complication. So we'd need to ship debug DCUs and non-debug DCUs. Is that right, Mark or David? Do you guys know the answer to that one? I think we, we effectively do this with the VCL. Um, so I'm, I'm actually not quite certain I can't answer because this, this, this should be very possible. Um, so I think uh, the best thing might be to, to contact support, perhaps, and, and, and um, unless I misunderstand the question. Um, but yeah, this, this definitely should be possible because you, know, you should be able to build a, a package with debug info, um, and it should work with debugging. Um, and I think we would need more information to, to understand what's, what's not working uh, here. Uh, let's see. Uh, a native SMTP component is missing. Indie SMTP cannot do auth2, or can someone do it? Does anyone know? So, that, oh gosh, what is it? Is it Insoft has some uh, components that might do that? I'm not sure if they do that specifically. Yeah, I think there are some third parties that allow uh, doing this. The other option is to rely on an external um provider like for example uh, amazon uh, simple mail service which is supported by our amazon mm -hmm. toolkit for delphi uh, for example um i you know it's different because it's not physically starting the 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 the, the simple mail product transaction from the phys from the machine that has the that has the application running, but in most cases, it's actually better to, to have that external. So there are also a lot of services that allow via the REST APIs to, to create um, a mail in a safe and secure way. Um, but um, yeah, in, in general terms, um, I mean, India is absolutely a great library. We love it. We, we, are, we are helping the 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 indie team in, in a few ways, but it is a third, it remains a third party library, not something that we own and we run uh, internally. And so it is lagging behind a bit in some of the um, security issues. Um, and um, we can again certainly encourage people to to improve indie. We plan we generally take updates for, for a, every, ma at least major release, at times even, even minor ones. Um, but we will not add, I mean, we, we will not directly, um, I mean, add components or features to, to, to Indie ourselves. 
Uh, Glenn just said that Indy has an SASL branch on GitHub with an OAuth 2 integration. So yes, that's another possibility. There are some there are some branches or um, proposals for change that you can you can download from GitHub that would add some of those features, but because they are not officially part of the library, it's not something we we are we really plan shipping as part of the core Rust Studio. So I think David was the uh, partial you're looking for was Delphi AST that's maintained by Stefan Linke. Is that the one you're thinking of? Uh, yes, that's the one. Um, okay. I thought I it was Roman. The chat. Actually, who, yeah, I, I thought it was Roman who, who maintained it, but um, I might be wrong. My memory Roman has been started it. today. I was just looking. Roman started it, and but the most the the it looks like the active maintenance is going on by Stefan Linke right now. Right. Yeah. Well, both both those people are, are wonderful community members. Yeah. Um, they've contributed a, a lot. And yeah, Delphi AST is a great parser for Pascal code. Um, in fact, the, the Parnassus plugins um, use it internally. Uh, when we when we integrate them into the IDE, which is is planned, we will you know probably move them over to our, our own tech. But um, obviously, when I wrote them, uh, they were they were external, and they they use Delphi AST. Uh, AST. It's an excellent excellent library. Okay. Uh, any plans to add NFC component to FireMonkey? Mm, not at this time. There are third party solutions for Delphi in 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 that space, in the blockchain space, uh, that we're more than happy to to promote and, and support, but not something we currently plan shipping. Will the UML model support of enterprise SKU be updated to support high DPI? Um, you know, think, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I can't really answer that at the moment. I think this is um, you're an area where looking at what to do with things like UML and modeling, and uh, you know, we're wondering whether we should, um, you know, find alternate technologies or not. Um, so this this one doesn't directly have an answer. Is is that sort of what you're about to say, Marco? Um, yeah, I mean, it is it is a tricky it is a tricky uh, issue because the core technology uh, our UML support is based on is not really uh, a good foundation for the future um so that's why change and and improvements uh, or even quality improvements have been very slow in that in that space um well, we are it's another area where as in many and in others where we really welcome more than a more than a qp uh, 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 an email and maybe the ability to to jump on a chat and have a discussion about what what's the specific goal and and use case scenarios you have. Uh, also, because the modeling support is quite vast and you might be interested in in some of those features. So, understanding that is is really valuable for for the PM team. So uh, it was just commented that oh, this was NFC. Yeah, no, <laughs> sorry. So, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's after an hour and a half. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I I completely yeah. missed that. Um, this is yeah. I was thinking about NFT, not not NFC. Um, no, and NF, NFC makes sense as as a fire monkey uh, feature. Um, it's right now. I think you can get to it via via um, the the native API exposed by some of these some of these uh, add-on libraries. Um, it's one of the areas under under consideration. We added one thing recently. I mean, in 11.3, that's that's the biometric authentication. We have a few things on the table that we're interested in that we're considering and and uh, near field communication. <laughs> is um is uh is one of them uh, yeah sorry for for the previous answer i kind of realized this is this uh, okay 
right, and then uh, I think this is the last question. Are, when are for the plans to address the right to left in Fire Monkey? Oh, uh, that's a fairly interesting question, and um, although in for several years the answer was um, very vague. Um, uh, now it's still going to remain a bit vague, but we do have work in progress uh, that was mentioned actually in the um, the Delphi anniversary uh, webinar uh, like a month ago, oh, less than a month ago, on yeah. on, on February fourteenth. Um, and the work that we announced is underway is um, integration of um, the Skia library as a backend for, for FireMonkey. Now, the relevance here for this topic is that one of the reasons FireMonkey is not supporting right to left is that we have specific code to optimize text rendering that really prevents us from from reverting the 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 sequence and the display um and that was has been a blocker for a long time removing that code was going to have a dreadful uh, effect on performance and so we kept that code but we we never went to to the right to left uh, direction now having skia allows us to replace the entire uh, rendering of text and that's fast and it's fast on on all platforms um, and it's fast also when it's, it's right to left however that will not automatically address the issue which remains in entering um entering i mean uh, right to left text so displaying text as something skia can solve um entering text is additional work that we'll seriously consider uh, once skia is um, is is available yeah th this is really exciting stuff and there's some of the yeah there there stay tuned there'll be some more about 11.3 in the and uh sorry this is exciting i'm excited about this this is going to be really big it is really big today so uh i'll have some more blog posts you can you can get on 11.3 um add the current skia for delphi yeah the external project which i think is in get it to, it is in to, get, it, yep. to get a to get an anticipation but some of this is going to be part of the core a product in the future yeah the 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 yeah there's there's things that have been work been works on a while and 11 3 we're starting to see some of this but yeah 12 is going to be a big a big upgrade in in the many many aspects so this is exciting stuff so get on 11 3 check out the uh skia for delphi project and get it and there's some other ones uh associated to that that'll be showing up too so very exciting stuff um and any plans to support OpenSSL cryptography? Only the components that can use OpenSSL functions and not to distribute the library itself. So I know there are other cryptography libraries in Get It now, but not. I don't think we have any around OpenSSL, do we? Uh, no, it's the entire, the entire issue around cryptography is fairly complicated. Yeah. Um. So in um, uh, honestly, I I don't have the real answer. Um, we there are some restrictions in shipping libraries, cryptographic libraries. There are also some restri legal restrictions in distributing APIs, but probably more limited. So I I would have to. Um, do some research and then we'll have to loop in our, our, our legal team anyway to do anything that touches cryptography, unfortunately, which makes us, I mean, a bit a bit slow and to move um, to move in these directions. Um, so Honestly. it is um, unfortunately an area where 
if we rely on the support that's available and shipping with the operating systems we target, um, that's great because well, we're not shipping it, we're just interfacing something that the operating system vendors have got permission if they need permission. Um, that's, for example, why we have been moving towards the HTML library that can do uh, SSL via the platform support on each of the supported platforms that pushes the burden of, of maintaining and having clearance for distribution on the operating system vendors rather than on us. All right, we made it. <laughs> that was a lot of great questions. Thank you, everybody. Um, I Hopefully, I got to, oh wait, there was a question about Twine Compile and I don't see that one in here. David, uh, can you address Twine Compile? I thought I added it to the list, but I don't see it, didn't see it. Sure. Yeah, I think there are a couple of questions we might sort of go through and just have one last check. But um, the question was about Twine Compile, if um, if we might integrate it within the IDE. And yeah, look, certainly that would be nice. Um, really appreciate what Twine Compile does and the the speed that it adds to the compilers. And um, you know, there's definitely a great benefit. Um, I think currently we're we're happy to ship it and get it, and you know, it's free if you have update uh, update sub. Um, you know, which is wonderful, but I think um, you know, it certainly would be nice if we end up doing more integration at some point. Um, nothing though we can discuss or enhance at the at the time being. But uh, certainly the interest there is is noted, and it's a it's a good good point. Um, there were a couple of other questions, Jim, if you don't mind. Oh, that yeah, go through. I see one here. Adding add files to the zip class that I did I missed somehow. I know that we made some changes to the uh, the zip component the, for class for managing zip files. Is there a plans to add add files to that, Marco? I don't hear Marco. I don't know if it's just me. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, I got distracted. One second. Uh, what was the question? Uh, the zip class. Is there plans to include add files to zip class? Um, I'm slightly confused. I thought we had the option to add files. Is I know there was some improvements I, recently. So maybe that was in there. Oh, files meaning multiple. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, got it, it. A list of files. Yeah, that might not be in there. I know that we are looking to adding delete files that we don't support. Uh, I, I remember that one. Um, if if it's not on QP, please put it in, in quality portal as as a feature request. Um, we we are doing, uh, we are planning some work, uh, further work around zip file. Uh, we did some cleanup and we did, uh, um, and we moved to a newer version of the underlying class because of a security bug that was not affecting our code. The the issue was in a method we don't call, but just to be on the safe side, we updated to the the latest version in 11.3. But um, yeah, it's it's always subject to to improvement. So uh, we we can certainly add that. It might already be in QP, um, and but if not, um, um, yeah, add it please. Okay. Um, another question here. Can you not write assembly inline assembly in for Linux when targeting Linux, and you have to use external assembler and import that OBJ file? And if you do that, can you debug using the CPU window to see the assembly language? Or I guess in general, can you use the assembly debug view on Linux? So yeah, you can't use inline assembly. I think it's only Win32. Is that right, Marco? Yeah, I think that is the case. Yeah, but you can't. You should be able to use the DB. I, the, I know the CPU view works on Linux, so you can see assembly from Linux. Um, so this question here: I have an older projects in Rio that are no problem to compile. When I compile them in um, 11.3, Windows says Windows Defender says it's unsafe. 
That's probably a false positive. I'm not sure why that would have changed. Any thoughts on that, Marco? No, we, I mean, we, not meaning we, but I mean, we developers uh, 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 have this, this continuous fight with uh, all of the anti-malware, anti-virus, and, and, and other things that uh, scans anything on your hard drive as long as it's added there. Uh, even and even more if an ex dangerous executable that you just produced with, with your favorite IDE. Um, I I don't know about the specifics. I, we've seen continuous uh, uphill battle uh, to to uh, w in these scenarios, and um, yeah, sure. in the specific case, it looks like a false positive. There may be something that is changed in the binary that's created that might be picked up as um, as a similar to the the, the 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 fingerprint of of a virus or or, or, or a software that is not that is not uh, allowed um, there are a many there are a few things we're considering and um, we also are in discussion with Microsoft about some of their initiative to further strengthen the 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 platform which we are absolutely fine but on the other hand trying to make sure it does not negatively affect the uh the developer um, experience we ha are having a lot of uh reports um that are that are related to 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 this scenario um there's the new compiler flags we did that improve security and then code signing Doing those things might improve that, I would think, possibly. Um, code signing might improve things for sure. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's it's the, the the main issue there is that the field is moving very fast. So um, what we build today into our IDE to overcome problems will going to be obsolete in in the six months or, or or in the time that that we end up releasing because microsoft is trying to move faster now they do have initiatives that looks promising uh, down the road um nothing that we can discuss in the public um we'll we'll, we'll try our best and we are trying our best to 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 stay um, um active but at the end of the day i mean Common scenario we've seen is people that who can debug because as soon as the last bit of the exe is saved to the disk, the file is locked in read only in, in, in a mode that it cannot be really open um, because some tool is checking if it's a virus. Um, and so like mm. you debug and the bug says, oh, I can open the executable file. Which was just created a second before. So th these are common issues, and there's no real solution. There are, there are mitigations that we can do at times. Um, we can really recommend our customers to disable all antivirus and anti malware because that's not a good idea for, for specifically, that's their primary machine. Uh, so I, I personally don't have a solution. It'd be great to have suggestions and, and, and recommendations if someone has good ideas. Yeah. Um, examples of in-app purchase in iOS. I think there's some in DocWiki or there's, if you go to the Delphi book site, there's a lot of books on mobile development too. Uh, if you have any thoughts on that, Marco. Um, no, I don't have I don't have any specific reference to 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 that scenario. I sure there is something, but um, I'm not I'm not certain where to find good information on um, in a purchase. Okay. Um, question here: Have changes been made to the native HTTP component client in from eleven three or in eleven three from eleven two? Uh, are teams having strange behavior where cookies are disappearing when communicating between a server and they believe an indie client? They are trying to put together a valid test case. Um, so there has been a, I'm not certain about, I mean, there has been 
um, couple of changes we made to improve the support for MIME types in REST calls, but I'm not sure it really applies to general HTTP calls, but it does apply to REST calls. Um, the, we looked into the specifications and made a few changes to better comply with the specifications, but ends up a few servers out there that really diverge from, from the specs. And so we went slightly backwards in, in a couple of scenario. I know there are three quality portal reports logged against different uh, REST servers that um, are not responding uh, in the same way they were with, with 11.2 when you do a REST client call. Uh, that is an issue we are working on a fix and we are considering uh, as a hot fix. If not, we'll make a clear workaround um, available to, to customers. Um, I was thought I was doing really good about tracking these questions. Apparently, just here, Mister, and we're about we're really out of time. Uh, question about adding a context here. I'm sorry, what's oh, that, David? I was just going to say that I have a few here that I would like to answer, but please go ahead and uh, you know, I'll ask the next ones, and then I can. So, the question about adding a context menu to T client data set. I'm not sure I understand I that question. I think I saw that, and my understanding was it was in the IDE. So. Um, you know, you'd, you'd right click and um, you know, right click the component, uh, and then there'd be a pop up menu in, in you know, a design time, perhaps. At least that's, that's how I interpreted it. Um, that makes you know, sense. The, the API lets you do that. You can register um, your know, menu items for, for a component of a particular type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, makes sense. Yeah, the answer might be <laughs> I don't know if I interpreted it right that we added a number of features to the Fardac mem table, the FD mem table editor, for example, the ability to preview, edit, navigate, and do other operations on the data at design time. These features, I mean, similar features have not been added to the client data set. Honestly, we are slightly more focused on, on FD mem table than, than, than CDS, uh, but, it's like data snap. It's a component we are defocused off, but it is still under under maintenance, and it's something we are we are considering. So I'm not excluding uh, change there. But in general terms, unless you are relying on some very specific client dataset capabilities, we do recommend considering a switch to uh, FD mem table. The difference in terms of power is quite impressive um, in terms of performance. Um, there is no external library dependency like client dataset has. FD main table is 100% Delphi code, 100% compiled into your application as native. Um, great performance, a lot of extra features. So it, it is a general recommendation. Uh, we understand that in some scenarios it's, uh, it's work and you might be needing specific client if the feature is not available. But as a general term, I'd really recommend moving to, to FD main table when possible. Um, so the question is, REST debugger source code available? It is. Glenn just pointed out the HTTP client in 11.3 does have changes with regards to cooking handling. Cooking handling. He just checked his Git log to see that. So. Um, Will this be published on YouTube? Yes, we plan to do that. And then David, you had said you had a couple of things you wanted to you meant, wanted to mention. I do. Yes, we have hundreds of questions, by the way, so it's quite easy to to miss some. Um, but there were a few sort of uh, C++ or IDE related ones that I I think would be good to answer. Um, one is about seeing a translator for C header files into Delphi units. Um, and actually asking if we can ship something with the IDE like like H2 has. Um, look, there are a couple of different tools that do that. Um, the one that I could remember right now, and I think I've said a few times my memory span today, um, is by Grigi called Chet. So if you Google 
um, G-R-I-J-J-Y, Grigi and Chet, C-H-E-T. Uh, that's a C header to, to Pascal Translator, and I believe there's at least one other out there that, um, you know, they, they could be really useful, useful tools. Um, yeah, I remember that question. I don't know why I didn't put it in the list. Thank you. Oh, no worries. Um, as I said, there are there are hundreds here, and we really appreciate, by the way, getting so many questions. I mean, that's that's the point of this webinar. But in general, just getting so many questions and so much um, interaction here, we we really do try to go through and answer everything um, in text, even if we can't, um, you know, in in speech. Uh, but Jim, there are a couple as well about uh, you know, refactorings of various sorts, like rename refactorings and others in C++ Builder, and you know, questions about um, you know whether we'll We'll fix those or, or replace them or, or that kind of thing. Um, and the answer there is yes, we've had Visual Assist on the roadmap back when we published roadmaps um, for some time, and, and that has great refactorings. Um, so our, our goal is to uh, you know to integrate something there. I, I think this is one of the areas where I need to say stay tuned for the upcoming blog post on on what's coming for, for C++. Um, but yeah, this is definitely an area that we want to to focus on. Um, I also wanted to add a note as well. We were discussing Windows on ARM in Parallels or Fusion. Um, and I know people are using this, but I just want to caution there because there are some issues that we know of. Uh, for example, we have some issues around debuggers um, on C++ especially. Um, you're running x86 emulated on ARM. You know, Microsoft's done a fantastic job. Uh, um, but you know some of the more advanced things can be can be issues. So we have seen some issues around debugging on on that platform. The other thing is we've seen issues that are invisible and you probably never notice, but they could have an effect, which is a you know potentially dangerous thing right. um, around the floating point emulation, especially around uh, emulation of the 80-bit long double format, which as far as I understand, is not supported when it's emulated, it's truncated to 64-bit. Um, so in, this might mean that your applications run very slightly differently, um, but one thing to be aware of is that the Delphi compiler itself uses this format, which means that you'll potentially get, get different compilation results um, when you compile running emulated on ARM versus not in areas that deal with floating point in the compiler. Um, and that's a bit of a gotcha that might be completely invisible. Um, so yeah, look, uh, Windows on ARM is is great. Just want to, to caution that you know, it's not one of our supported platforms for, for a reason. Yeah, yeah, good to know. And that 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 is always the tricky thing with, uh, with that uh, unsupported platforms. And, and the, uh, Microsoft also is officially not officially supporting the uh, that platform either under parallels they're saying, but they're planning to in the near future. So, all right. I wasn't certain if they officially support it yet or not, but but yeah. Look on that note, there were a couple of questions as well about the IDE um, about 64-bit because a couple of questions about people running out of memory both when compiling and just when opening a lot of forms, um, and there were questions about ARM again. Um, so look, 64 would is something we're actively researching, but we have nothing to announce. Um, so can't really you know, tell you anything there other than that it would certainly be something we would like to do. Um, and we're researching it, but we have no, no news to share. And as for running natively on ARM, um, you know, this would obviously be things like not just the IDE, but you know, the compilers and you know, debuggers and you know all of our toolchain, um, which is quite a large uh, thing. Um, in general, the strategy we would most likely have to follow there is to have 64-bit for Intel first before moving to ARM. So it's a two-step um, approach there. Uh, the reason for that being that um, uh, ARM is, is a 64-bit platform. So we should do it in two steps anyway to get to 64-bit. Um, and iron out any 64-bit issues, uh, which has its own big benefits. Um, and at that point, moving over to ARM would, you know, be a, a separate stage. But we would already be on 64-bit. Um, very tricky to do both a bitness change and a platform change at the same time. 
And so uh, yeah, one, one and then the other would be the approach, but, but we have nothing we can really announce there currently. But I do see a few questions about that. So um, yeah, definitely, uh, you yeah, definitely see see the interest there. Kyle, Kyle, just let me know he has to jump. He's been typing answers in the background for a lot of these as well too. Um, so he's not here anymore, but uh, is FireDAC Explorer source code available? If so, where is it? Oh, I don't think the source code is actually available for that tool. Um, I know we shipped the source code for a number of the of the FireDAC tools. But I don't think we shipped source code for all of them. Um, and it's also tricky to find them because some of them, some of them are in demos and some of them are in the source <laughs> folder, which, well, it's slight. No, I think the FireDAC ones are in the source folder. It's the rest debugger that's um, in the demos, and um, yeah, it's not completely, completely smooth. Um, yeah, someone's just asking where the rest debugger was in the source code for that, and I'm just going to share the uh, copy. It's in the yeah source data. Rest debug is where the rest debugger occurs. Uh, so Lewis is saying, please continue maintenance of data snap. Uh, it's very important to us. Uh, any other, we're, I, I really want to try and finish this before we hit two hours. Uh, David, were there any other questions you wanted to make sure we address? Otherwise, let's go ahead and wrap this up here. It's, uh, oh, yeah, and actually, I, I have a meeting at the top of the hour that I actually already postponed. <laughs> so I, I would like to stop as well. <laughs> Um, but there's a couple of others. There were a few questions about C++ standard support. For example, there's one about if C++ 20 is in 11.3, and um, I think I saw one, or I might have noted in a reply to another that C++ 23, the standard, was actually finished a, a few days ago. Um, so 11.3 supports C++ 17. Uh, but we do plan to upgrade language support and this is again one of the things where i just want to say hey you know there's the blog post coming soon with news um so uh yeah stay stay tuned we have some good stuff to to talk about in terms of the, the things that we we have planned and are, are under active development um in c++ builder so hopefully there's enough of a hint to uh um you know stay stay tuned and and, and look out for that that post um, oh, and I think there were a couple of others around, let's see, the IDE. I'm sorry, I've forgotten one, but there was a question in general about you know, encountering any errors in the IDE, which is some, um, you know, obviously hope you don't run into those, but if it does happen, uh, there's something I wanted to point out as a bit of a tip for doing that. Uh, so, for, sorry, for, for, for when that happens um, and finding a bug report. Um, one thing that can be really useful is to run a second instance of the IDE and use the run menu attach uh, menu item to attach to the first instance. And that will let you debug Dolphy or C++ Builder from within uh, your, your second instance of Dolphy or C++ Builder. And you can look at the threads view and find the main thread, which is usually the first, and get a call stack. And that will actually give you a lot of insight into what it's doing. Um, that might be enough to help you solve the problem if it turns out that it's in your know, code from a particular component library or, or something like that. But um, if not, then just copy pasting that call stack is really useful into any QP report because uh, it gives us a really um, really good head start into where to look and into what any issue is. So yeah, it's a great sort of I don't know tip I guess that yeah you can use Delphi to to debug Delphi. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's one of the things I love about Delphi is it is a it, it, it is kind of a low code tool in some regards, but it is written in Delphi so you can debug and extend Delphi from Delphi. And really, that, at the end of the day, it means just there's nothing you can't do. So it is top of the hour. Uh, we do need to go. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. So many great questions. I apologize if I missed your question. Honestly, it was an honest mistake. Um, but Thank you everybody for being here and uh, we hope you're enjoying 11.3 and we look forward to seeing you online in the future. Yes, absolutely. If you have any follow-up question or you want to reiterate and explain better, 
and feel free to uh, drop us an email or reach out in any other way uh, that 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 you can and um, we're also very open to have calls and conversation with customers i mean it's important to get uh, real world feedback on how you're using the product and how you want the product to, to evolve in the future yeah, yeah absolutely um i would echo that as well and um you know, thank you for, for attending and for writing in so many questions. Um, we really appreciate all forms of feedback. I mean, as Marco said, please feel free to contact us and email us and, and that kind of thing as well. But it's been great to have so many questions in. And Jim, I think you've done a fantastic job going through hundreds and, and filtering um, into the, the presentation here and and then asking more. Um, it's an excellent job there and appreciate it. Well, my pleasure. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, and we'll see you uh, online. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.